Hello and welcome to my uh, latest update on the new features which we've added to version 1.24 of Helium. Now in this video today I just want to go over some of the new features and uh, show you some of the enhancements to bring it in line with, uh, with Neon. Uh, if you don't know Neon is a uh, four pockets audio editor stroke clip launcher and uh, uh, Neon obviously is the MIDI editor but there were kind of uh, uh, similar uh, layouts, similar design, but I think we did a better job in Neon, so I've brought a lot of the Neon um, uh, look and feel to, uh, to Helium. So I want to go over that today and show you a few new key features. So on the surface, the two apps look very similar in terms of uh, physical interface and layout. Um, they have both uh, have a black interface uh, with uh, left and top toolbars. But when I put together the interface for Neon, you can see here that we put the white border surround around the toolbars and floating menus and took away the transparency, which I think is a lot clearer and easier to read. So uh, I've actually gone through the process of changing the whole interface within Helium to bring that in line with Neon uh, with the same look and feel because going forward I want to try and integrate these two packages even more. So if we take a closer look at Helium uh, you'll notice that the um, menus are now got the white board around them, they're no longer transparent and all the floating uh, uh, pop-up windows all have that surround as well as well as the toolbars which uh, I think look a lot nicer and uh, certainly easier to read. So we've done that throughout the interface uh, and that's probably the main uh, difference. Also now when we run in compact mode we can uh, access all these extended options with the chevrons uh, before you could do that from the more button. Uh, so it's just a, 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 nice, uh, a, a nice change all around really. Now if we take a look at the media bay uh, we, you can see some other changes that we've brought over from uh, Neon. Uh, in particular, um, the import button's now gone and we have a files app button instead uh, with the ability to import and export directly from here, which is better for iPhone users, especially those on old versions of iOS where we don't have the drag and drop. And you can also see we have the ability to import a folder now if we are on either of the first two tabs uh, in Media Bay. Now that obviously has advantages in that we can bring whole libraries of MIDI files in very easily. Now as most of you know if you select an item, a MIDI file rather, in Media Bay and swipe left to right we get the rename and move options. And previously when you swiped uh, right to left uh, we got the delete option but if you look now we have, have an additional option called copy and that actually copies the raw MIDI file uh, to the clipboard, the general clipboard, so we can paste that into other apps now. Uh, also, uh, if we paste uh, within uh, Helium, uh, we can paste MIDI files from the general clipboard uh, directly into the editor, where previously we used a proprietary format for copying and pasting of MIDI notes. Now, additionally, we can now select uh, a new option uh, called insert which uh, allows everything in the editor to shuffle up rather than pasting in place which was previously the case. Now another new feature uh, if I select all notes if you look on the right hand side of the screen we've always had the ability to shift notes either up or down by single notes or octaves but we've now got two additional buttons that let us uh, shift left and right uh, the amount they shift is governed by the grid settings. If I set that to 8th notes, we'll move in 8th notes. So I think that's a welcome addition and one that people have been requesting. Now, one important thing I forgot to mention is that if you do uh, copy a multi-track MIDI file uh, into the general clipboard, as I'm about to do here, and you attempt to paste that into Helium, uh, it will then prompt you uh, for with a dialogue as you're about to see uh, and you'll see that it has all 16 channels here uh, but it has a little asterisk next to all the ones that have data so you can get to pick 
uh, which track you want to import from that multi-track MIDI. Now that's in complete contrast to dragging and dropping that multi-track in because in that case it would just import the file as a new song and replace everything in the uh, in the editor. Now another useful tip is uh, when you press uh, long press on the rewind button it now seeks to the end of all MIDI data. Press the rewind button it rewinds back but that's handy if you ever wanted to paste something on the end of your content. Now one of the biggest features I've added to this version is the ability to run Helium uh, in slide over and side by side mode. So we can now uh, drag Helium out the dock and add it to the slide over stack. Now that's handy in itself, but probably it's, it's side by side mode split screen where I think you're going to get the most use out of this, especially going forward when we start uh, making these two apps work better together. So in this example you can see we have a copy of Helium running and I can slide a copy of Neon out of the dock and uh, because it already supports side by side mode you can see here we can uh, get the two apps running side by side. Now one of the newest features I added to Neon uh, was the MIDI slice button that allows you to save a copy of the uh, slice, the MIDI for the slices to trigger the slices. But if you, if you tap and hold on that MIDI button, you can literally drag the MIDI file straight into Helium. So if you've sliced a, a drum loop up, uh, you can trigger that drum loop via the MIDI. Um, and obviously then you can alter the tempo of that uh, to a certain extent. Uh, most of you will know exactly what I'm talking about. Now another addition added to uh, 1.25 uh, is the ability to add a launch button. Now this is only useful for simple loops uh, where we're not using remote or song mode. But if you uh, if you um, go to AUM's properties, we can add a little launch button up here by the uh, Helium uh, icon. Now once the host transport is running, we can simply engage the launch button and it will start playback at the next bar. Uh, if we uh, uncheck the launch button, it will stop playback at the next bar. Uh, so it's quite a useful little feature that, but just remember it won't work with remote mode because those, those options are linked to a linear playback of the host application. Now another thing uh, that's improved in 1.25 is the looping. Uh, we've made a, a significant improvement in loop timing. I know a couple of you reported that. Uh, and we've also uh, added the uh, the ability to uh, color code and name the uh, icon within AUM. So if we have multiple instances of Helium running, we can quickly identify them. So uh, this is uh, being brought directly from Neon, and uh, I think it's another welcome change. So that just about concludes the list of changes in 1.24. But there's plenty of, uh, of updates to come in Helium. Uh, it's still, uh, I consider it anyway, one of my uh, best pieces of software. And I've got plans to, uh, to make it even better. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, the whole reason for doing uh, split screen and side by side in these two apps is because I want to bring a better integration between them. Because I think the future is these two, two apps working together as a pair. So uh, yeah, that's going to happen uh, over the coming weeks and uh, I'd like uh, to think all of you are going to come along for the ride. So that's it for this video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Uh, don't forget to thumb up this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next video, whatever that may be.